next. It's time to hit the ballpark with homegrown baseball players who've achieved induction into the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. Maybe the best to lace them up from the Rose City. During the 80s, Dale Murphy earned top awards for fielding and hitting, playing for the Atlanta Braves. From Rex Putnam High School to Linfield to the Bronx, Scott Brocious was a fan favorite for getting the big hit when needed. The MVP and All-Star was called Brocious the Ferocious. Wally Backman grew up in Hillsboro, Oregon and played 14 seasons in the bigs. While hitting 320 and playing a solid second base for the Mets, he was key to winning the 1986 World Series. All next on Great Athletes, Great Oregonians. Today's show will cover baseball players who competed, won, and became legendary members of the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. Our first inductee was a standout at Wilson High School before playing in the major leagues for 18 seasons. Dale Murphy's best years were in Atlanta during the 80s. He played in seven All-Star games, won two MVP awards, five consecutive gold gloves, and spent a decade as the most productive power hitter in Major League Baseball. Here's the story of Dale Murphy. Lou Gehrig said, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. I consider myself the luckiest coach on the face of the earth. Many have coached players who have become major leaguers, but how many have been lucky enough to approach a superstar, a future Hall of Famer? A man who reached for excellence in his personal and professional life and achieved it. Uh, it's a funny game. I'm, it's just a game where you have to go day in and day out. And not, you know, put so much pressure on yourself, and, and I've done it. But the next time up, Dale simply hit it a little farther with the bases loaded. Another grand slam. I'm very proud to have had the opportunity to coach such a talent, such an individual. As a youth, Dale was a gifted athlete. He could run, throw, hit with power, and had a mental toughness that was mixed with a great attitude. Being strongly goal-oriented and always going the extra mile, Dale's skills continued to improve as he reached for another level of excellence. <laughs> In the air to deep left field, this one may be out of here, and Murphy's hit the home run. Within his, this framework of hard work and a positive mental attitude, there was no room for complacency or big-headedness. So Greatness was the inevitable out. result. So it's fitting and proper that we've gathered together this evening to tell Dale a thing or two. We want to tell him that he has earned our respect and admiration, that he has been judged by everyone here and found to be a darn good guy, friend, baseball player, role model, and humanitarian. He and Nancy are perennial MVP, most valuable parents. For your years of concern and toil, for your never-ending dedication to the goals of your profession, for your efforts on behalf of our youth, and for the unselfish giving of your time and talents in the cause of helping others, we honor you this evening. I'd like to thank the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame for this honor. I wish I could be there tonight. I have great memories from my days in Portland playing baseball. Of course, I would want to thank at this time Jack Dunn for his guidance and direction and for his leadership, his coaching. Thank you, Jack. It was a great tradition of sports in Oregon, and I'm thankful to be a part of it, and I appreciate what the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame has done to promote this great tradition. I thank all of you coaches, referees, administrators who are involved in sports who are giving our young people a chance to be involved. The lessons they learn from involvement in athletics is invaluable and will help them throughout their lives. So thank you very much, and stay involved. I would like to thank, lastly, my parents for accepting this award and thank them for all that they have done for me throughout my life, for the great examples that they have been to me, and for them encouraging me and giving me a chance to be involved in baseball and other sports. Thank you, Mom and Dad. I love you. I miss you. and wish I could be there tonight. 
Thanks again to the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame for this award and honor. I appreciate it very much. Our next small town Oregon player became good enough to play at the top. He hit a home run in his first major league game, perhaps a sign. He would go on to star under the bright lights, but Scott Barocious has never forgotten where he came from. One of baseball's great late bloomer stories, Scott Brosius would shine under the brightest lights in New York City. Quite a journey for a man who is really a small town boy at heart. Brosius wasn't necessarily the best player at Rex Putnam High School, or for that matter at Linfield College. He had never attended a major league game until he signed his first professional contract. Even when he made the bigs with the Oakland A's in 1991, Brosius labored in obscurity, known more for his defense than his bat. It was the trade that brought Brosius to the Yankees prior to the 1998 season that changed Scott's outlook all the better. Slowly to third, charging is Brosius, bare hand, fires, got him! Oh, what a play! In his first year in the Big Apple, Scott raised his batting average 100 points. He made his first All-Star appearance and then led the Yankees to a World Series sweep of the Padres. Fields, rolls across, end time, ball game over! In that series, Brosius became a household name, hitting 471 in the series and belting a couple of big home runs. Swung on a drill deep to left field, going back is Vaughn, still back, on the track, at the wall, looking up, see ya! A home run for Scott Brosius, who is having a blistering World Series. 1999 brought Scott his first gold glove at third base. Brosius to his feet, oh what a play by Brosius! and another World Series ring. Now it's up to Brosius for New York. Brosius made headlines in the October Classic again with his clutch home run in that emotional 2001 series against the Diamondbacks. The final tally, 11 seasons, a 257 career average, 141 home runs, four World Series, three rings. But it did not end with retirement. Rosius is a dedicated father, fundraiser, and member of the Linfield College baseball staff. Scott Rosius, a big league guy, who now calls McMinnville home. It was um, certainly playing. Uh, it was a. Uh, it was kind of a long process. I, like I said, from all I ever wanted to do as a as a as a kid growing up was was play baseball. Um, I was fortunate enough that I was had enough ability to, to be able to play in high school and play beyond on high school, get to college. Um, I think Linfield College, where I, where I played um, my baseball, in, uh, was the perfect place for me to be. But at the same time, when I, when I signed professionally after my junior year, uh, I was I was drafted in the 20th round. Um, that's not where they give you the big bucks. Um, you know, I was I was six one and, and 185 pounds. I was a skinny kid that that uh, was just looking for the opportunity to play. And so it, it was. Um, for me, it was just never letting go of a dream. I wanted to play. I had to kind of really battle and work my way through the minor leagues. And, and uh, when I got to the big leagues, it, success didn't really come right away. And it wasn't easy. But uh, I loved doing it. And uh, it, was, it was, you know, looking back on it, I wouldn't trade a minute of it. Welcome home. Okay. Stand up there. Coming up, the story of a Hillsborough native who went from Oregon to a World Series championship. The Wally Backman story after the break. Great athletes, great Oregonians. From the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame is sponsored by Nike and by D.A. Davidson. Financial advice for the long run.
D.A. Davidson, financial advice you can trust. The Oregon Sports Hall of Fame recognizes and celebrates Oregon's rich athletic history. It's built on the premise that the lessons of sport provide a unique opportunity for self-discovery. Through an extensive memorabilia collection and exciting interactive exhibits, the Hall teaches and reinforces character and values. Each year, the Hall commits to lifelong rewards in the form of scholarships awarded to high school student athletes. Contact us about this process and the annual induction ceremony at your Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. Wally Backman grew up in Hillsboro, Oregon and went on to play 14 seasons in the majors. He hooked up with five different clubs but was most known for his eight years of grit and hustle with the New York Mets. Wally Backman. Growing up as kids, it was really interesting with Wally. <clears throat> he was always the kid that was in trouble, that my friends didn't like because he just could never stand to lose. When we were kids growing up, we didn't have a lot of money, but one thing we always had was plenty of baseballs and plenty of bats. Now, you have to understand that Wally's six years younger than me. Not a lot of guys wanted him on, his on their team, but that changed. It didn't take very long before all of a sudden, the two captains picking the teams every Saturday was me and Wally. The highlight of Wally's career had to be 1986 when he was with the New York Mets. We all remember that they won the World Series there. He played the game with a lot of intensity, his hustle, his desire. It was infectious. It carried over to lots of the players in the clubhouse. Wally was one of those guys that because of his desire, his love of the game, the way he played the game, he made his other players play bigger, smarter, stronger, and their love of the game increased as well. Wally, again, congratulations on being inducted into the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. The Oregon Sports Hall of Fame has an expansive collection of memorabilia, included uh, Dale Murphy was a five-time gold glove winner, won five consecutive gold gloves. One of his gold gloves here is part of the collection of the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, also, Dale Murphy, seven-time All-Star, one of his All-Star game trophies from the 1985 game uh, here is part of the collection. Uh, Mickey Lolich, he's a pitcher with the Detroit Tigers in the 68 series. He remains the only pitcher in Major League history to win three games in a single series. Also hit a home run in the series. He was the MVP of the 68 series. Uh, Scott Brocious, cover of Sports Illustrated while he was with the Yankees. That's also part of the collection. Wayne Twitchell was a pitcher for nine years with Milwaukee, Philadelphia, Montreal, the Mets, and the Mariners. He was voted an All-Star in 1973 with the Phillies. He's an inductee in the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. Wayne Twitchell. No pitcher in the history of Portland High School baseball ever threw a baseball harder than Wayne Twitchell. That's what they say, at least. After three years at Wilson High School, Twitchell was spotted by Bill White the same scout who discovered the legendary Dale Murphy. Originally drafted by the Astros, Wayne would enjoy a 10-year Major League career on the mound with five different teams. His 1970 debut with Milwaukee was memorable. Facing the Twins, he struck out the meat of the batting order. Rod Carew, Tony Oliva, and Harmon Killebrew. Twitchell spent most of his career with Philadelphia. His best year was his All-Star year of 1973. Wayne was 13 and nine with a 2.50 ERA in a career high 223 innings pitched. Six years later, his career ended back in the Northwest with the Mariners at Wilson High School Twitch was more than just a baseball player. His all-city and all-state honors extended to football as well. Now active in Portland real estate, Wayne Twitchell gives back by helping the Wilson baseball program. And for that, he was rewarded with the joy of watching the Trojans win this year's Oregon Class 4A championship. 
you can go home again. From local hero to major leaguer to community leader, Wayne Twitchell can still bring it on. relationships built on loyalty. Boy, you talk about a young kid with stars in his eyes. I mean, you got to understand that I'm the only guy in professional baseball that ever did this. I went right from the city leagues to the major leagues and played regular. And I was leading the league after two weeks hitting 389 in the National League. Believe it or not, Ripley had it in their paper. And they said the odds of doing what I did were 10 million to one. And that, you know, the kids should hear this. If they think for some reason they're not big enough or they don't look right or they don't come from the right environment, uh, they've got to put that aside. They got to say to themselves, first of all, who am I? Find out who you are. And then you say to yourself, who would I like to be? What do I have to do to reach those dreams and those goals? And it's a personal thing. John Francis Black Jack Wilson was a pitcher from the University of Portland and played in the majors from 1934 to 42. Playing with the legends of baseball, Jack Wilson carved his own legend in the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. Jack, they told me not to talk about statistics, but I've got to give one that you're proud of. They've got all your pitching statistics, but how about the year when as a pitcher, you batted 278 with two home runs? You were part of my growing up. In the eighth grade, our basketball team thought we were pretty good. You and my dad put together a team of old guys, old guys, and we played you a game. Well, we got more elbows and we got rebounds. Jack, we love those times. And I'm gonna close with just one more statistic, and that is with us, you batted 400 for friendship and for good times. Today was the first day I'd been around in quite a while here and saw the people who I hadn't seen in quite a while. And it was really great, I'll tell you. They all don't look a day older, but they're, like me, they're not very fast anymore. <laughs> but I think that if I could tell a boy of mine that, uh, something for him to do later on. If he has the call to, to be a ball player, don't let anybody fool you. It's a great life, and you'll enjoy it. And people will enjoy you, which is the main thing. You go along and just keep plugging her out. Now I'd like to just say that as far as I'm concerned, my wife made the right decision. <laughs> I'm very happy. Thank you. The lessons these inductees have learned have the ability to impact all of us. High school student athletes are also busy absorbing these lessons. Uh, with me now, uh, Jude Schimmel from Franklin High School. Um, you are going to be a junior there. Uh, Tell me about you know you as an athlete, and are there things you learn as an athlete that you can take and apply to other areas of your life? Um, yeah, just like you, ha you always have to be positive and like be willing to do like you have to know what you're gonna do and how you're gonna do it like before you go out there. You have to have a plan. I guess it's all in your head, so everything's always like in your head. So. And those things aren't just in sports. You yeah, know, you can use every, them in yep. school and life and job. Yeah. Um, what's it like for you? You're in a really unique situation because mom is a coach. 
older sister is like this legendary state, former state player of the year who's also on your team. Uh, what's that like to be in the role that you're in? Um, I guess it's hard at times, but it's really helpful too because like you have someone to look up to, you have someone there to help you all the time. And having my mom there, I guess it's a lot easier because like I already have that relationship with her. You don't have to like build a new one. So it's hard and easy, I guess. Yeah, I've interviewed your sister. She, you know, we talked about LeBron James and Michael Jordan yeah. as being, you know, her role models as basketball players and Candace Parker as well. Uh, who are yours? Um, I don't really have one other than my sister. Um, she's been there all my life and I just always look up to her for basketball. And, and, and as you look at the, the state, uh, you know, in Oregon and, and basketball, and obviously, you know, your sister's already played in t championship games and played a long way in the state playoffs. Um, it, what kind of experiences do you have? And, you know, what, what are you planning for your, you know, for yourself? What kinds of things are you looking forward to? Um, I guess I'm looking forward to making it that far and, like, being able to go that far. Um, I've only played in one state tournament. Um, is a lot different than just a regular game. Are you already thinking college? Where would I play basketball? Where do I want to study? Are you thinking that far ahead? I haven't thought that far ahead yet. I know I want to go and play basketball in college, but I don't know where. All right, thank you. Jude Schimmel, thank you. Franklin High School. Good luck. Thanks. Up next, a rare dream came true for Corvallis High Spartan back in 1972. That's next on Great Athletes, Great Oregonians. advice you can trust. The Oregon Sports Hall of Fame recognizes and celebrates Oregon's rich athletic history. It's built on the premise that the lessons of sport provide a unique opportunity for self-discovery. Through an extensive memorabilia collection and exciting interactive exhibits, the Hall teaches and reinforces character and values. Each year, the Hall commits to lifelong rewards in the form of scholarships awarded to high school student athletes. Contact us about this process and the annual induction ceremony at your Oregon Sports Hall of Fame. Great athletes, great Oregonians. From the Oregon Sports Hall of Fame is sponsored by Nike and by D.A. Davidson. Financial advice for the long run. Our final inductee started Corvallis High School and went on to play for the University of Oregon Ducks. Dave Roberts fulfilled his dream and was the first pick in the 1972 draft by the San Diego Padres. He enjoyed the rare thrill of playing in the bigs on the same day he was drafted, skipping the minor leagues entirely. A great player who hoped and prayed that sacrifice and hard work would pay off. Here's Dave Roberts. The late Don Kirst successfully recruited him for the Duck Baseball Program in 1969. During the second year of our coach-player relationship, I suggested to him that it would be best for his professional career if I moved him from shortstop to third base. But coach, he said, I have always played short and I want to be a major league shortstop. I countered with, if you can show me one major league shortstop with a rear end as big as yours, you can stay there. He moved to third base. The first day he reported to the San Diego Padres after being the first round draft choice in 1972, he started the game at third base and went two for four off Doc Ellis of the defending world champion Pittsburgh Pirates. Not a bad start. A leaky heart valve shortened his playing career as one of the most versatile players in the major leagues. This man has always been led by his strong faith in God. My name is Mel Krause, and without further ado, I would like to introduce to you Dave Roberts. Mom and Dad, thanks to both of you. Uh, knowing that my dream was to play in the big league someday, you never once discouraged me from doing that. I never once said, I think you better look for, you know, be a little more realistic and maybe there's a better voc vocation for you. You never once said that. You allowed me to pursue my dream and uh, for me it came true and I thank you for that. Thank you again once to the Oregon, once again to the Oregon Hall of Fame, to all of you. Thank you for being here, and this is a great honor. I thank you very much. People always say it rains too much in the Northwest, that Oregon is a track and field state. They play soccer there, and they play basketball and football there. But baseball, it's too rainy, right? I think that's what makes this show remarkable. The athletes that we've seen featured here are homegrown, native athletes. They're Oregonians who went on to do great things in baseball. 
Great athletes, great Oregonians. Financial relationships built on loyalty.